Hey, everybody, it's Joe and Angel. Welcome to another Mailbag Monday, where Angel and I take time and answer questions that you sent in, and we've got a long list today. So before we start, I'm going to say thank you to our partners. Our partners make this possible. They pay for our equipment, our studio. They make all this possible. We go around the world for this studio. I mean, it's amazing. I mean, we do about 50 to 60 seminars a year, but really who, where we reach the people is through our podcast. So partners, thank you. If you'd like to be a partner, you can go to our website and tap in partner and you can uh, give a one-time gift, give a monthly gift. Any way you do it, it's going to be wonderful. We thank you so much for our partners. Angel. Thank you very much. That's a blessing to us. Okay. I'm a college student with a roommate who is not a Christian. She is constantly partying, drinking, and bringing people to our apartment that are not people I want to surround myself with. I really don't know what to do. How do I maintain my distance or talk to her about this? I'm afraid that she's going to think I'm being judgmental or she won't understand because she has a different belief system. You are, and then she won't understand. Uh, you need to talk to somebody in authority, get you a different roommate. And uh, I'm assuming you're in a sector college, and uh, that's somewhat of a challenge, so... Uh, you're going to have to find a roommate that you can request. Hey, I like, you know, Sheely Bob here to be around my roommate. Can you arrange that? And most universities will do that. Now, some are just rude. They won't. They just want your paycheck or your check. But uh, you need to ask somebody because it won't change. It'll stay bad. And it's going to get worse. And uh, my daughter, when she went to college, uh, she had been there for a year and uh, she gets a new roommate. <clears throat> And I don't know what this girl's expectations were that, you know, that they would be like best friends or whatever. But Nicole, my daughter had already been there a year and had established some friends, but she was very nice to her and everything. But <clears throat> over time, this girl started doing things like she put a sheet around the bottom bunk bed so she couldn't, she could just hide in there and talk to her mom. And then uh, she would just slam the door all the time and, uh, she finally called the RA person that was over the hallway and uh, they had to come in and she just said, she gets up early and wakes me up. And well, she had a 7 a.m. class, you know, anyway, after that semester, they just decided to, to go their separate ways, get different roommates. Well, it was funny about, well, kind of funny, but, uh, but, but about <laughs> the senior year, she runs into her on campus and just says, Hey, how you doing? Da, 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 just trying to do a nice conversation. She goes, well, maybe we should have lunch sometime. And the girl goes, mm, no. <laughs> and I said, wow. <laughs> Usually give a courtesy. Ooh. Yeah, sure. But uh, anyway, so sometimes that is, you know, sometimes those things can build character, those kind of situations. Um, <clears throat> in college, I had one roommate that was, a clean freak. The next year I have one that, oh, slob central. Matter of fact, she did it. I remember she made a smoothie and didn't <laughs> want to wash the dishes. So she stuck, stuck the dishes under her bed and the room just started smelling really bad. I couldn't figure out where it was coming from. Oh, it was awful. But anyway, <clears throat> everybody's raised different. You know, when, when I was in basic training, first time I've been in a room with 120 other guys and I, I realized 120 guys have 120 different ways of doing stuff. You know, and uh, and you go in the latrine, you don't have a private bathroom. You have 24 open toilets sitting back to back one another mm -hmm. and the noises and smells and stuff and people that wouldn't shower right or wouldn't brush their teeth right or people just, it was just, it's like, oh man. So I realized when I get out, I mean, we would joke when we finally got leave, two of my buddies from Minnesota, where are you going? Holiday Inn. What? I'm going to the Holiday Inn. I'm going to go in my bathroom and shut the door. So I'd be in a bathroom by myself. I want to be in a bathroom by myself. And so you realize sometimes college is kind of let you know what you like and don't like. What do you want? I don't want anybody around me. I don't know. <laughs> if I don't know you, no, I don't want to get in a room with you. <laughs> Woo. Listen, there's another way to look at this too. Uh, oh, here's a good one. <laughs> yeah. You may be the only light that this girl ever sees. I know. And so you don't want... To, to be like, how can I get away from her? You're on the mission, how can Phil. I shine some light on this? You know, just love on her. And uh, but I don't want to reroom with her again. Yeah, yeah, there's <laughs> nothing wrong with that. Yeah, but you, you know, uh, but uh, our job is not to be the Holy Spirit for somebody nope. uh, and to try to clean them up. Our job is to be a light. And you got to be truthful with them. They ask you, said, does this stuff bother you? Yes. <laughs> what? 
you're noisy, you stand drunk, and don't wash the dishes, you don't bathe. Truth will set you free, but you have to learn how to say it without getting slapped, you know. And somebody asks, is this bother you? Well, not you mentioned. Yeah, it does bother me. You know? She knows. She already knows. I know. I know. But yeah, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with trying to get a different roommate. Nope. She probably feels the same way. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's a that's a yeah she's telling her friends i'm with a neat freak i'm some kind of neat freak in my room yes you know if i can get somebody else i want to get somebody normal <laughs> so, it's going yeah. two ways two yeah. way street okay joe i'm in my 40s and what i could i would consider an extreme introvert i want to be married and find a spouse but just the thought of going out and trying to find someone is mentally exhausting mm. do you have any advice mm. well the way to meet people being around them, not going out on a date. That's the worst way to meet somebody. You want to be in a group setting. Uh, I tell people volunteer for the Red Cross, volunteer in your local church, uh, teach a class. You know, if you're, I assume you're in church somewhere, teach a class, but get around where there's a lot of other people. And that's how you meet people. But that one on one dating, that never works very much. Well, and as they're saying, they're basically private and shy, uh, introvert. I, Introverts don't get married. <laughs> they just don't. I mean, trying to be blunt, but I would say this love is risky. It is. Oh my goodness. Yes, it is. But is it worth it? Yes. It's very, every bit of it is worth it, but it is a risk that you're going to have to take and you're going to have to put yourself out there. Uh, and it's not both got big families, but you, you try to play it safe. You're going to be old one day. You'd be 96 sitting on the porch by yourself. What you do? Well, I played it safe. I got relatives. I got one I'm thinking about right now. I just went to heaven about a, about a year ago in 97 and I never wanted any kids. And, uh, his wife died 30 years prior to him dying and he would regret. So how come we never had kids? He didn't want them. I remember you saying, well, you don't want kids. We like to have our own life. Well, eventually somebody's going to go on. You know, the whole thing about having kids is you're going to have somebody ratchet and that can be good or bad. <laughs> Children are reward, but there's two list of rewards. You got to learn how to train them and teach them, but it's not good to be alone. It's never good to be alone. No, and if you have that desire, God's placed that in your heart. Yeah. And so, um, and, and listen, people, you can ask Angel. People would think Joe's so outgoing, and Angel would tell me, I'm, Joe, you're an introvert. You, you don't like going anywhere or doing anything. No, I don't. I do that for a living. I like to be by myself, go in my office. Stay in my house. And see me, I'm I'm I love to be around people. Yeah, man, we're gonna have 48 friends come over for something, you know. <laughs> well, you marry your opposite, you do. And we're Ace and I absolutely perfect one another. We are. Yes, you probably will attract an extrovert. <laughs> yeah, you will. You will. <laughs> God's got a wacky sense of humor. He does. Well, that's what makes you that will make you a complete couple. Yes, it will. So but the best, marriage. the best thing is to, you know, I've seen places like if you, if you go to a class where they're doing teaching cooking classes, yeah. or if you go do an event with a group, that's probably one of the better ways it to is. meet somebody. Perfect. And I know if you go online, there's a lot of people that do the group thing yep. and it, and then that you can get in and meet some new people and, yeah. and uh, maybe discover new talent and uh, yeah. God's got somebody out there, but you got to get in the water. You do. Yeah, they're not going to jump out of the water and grab you. You got to get in there. They're not coming to your door. You got to go to theirs. <laughs> Joe, many of my Christian friends are online dating. I feel like God will bring someone into our lives when it's the right time and we shouldn't always be looking. Do you have an opinion on this? Well, you need to answer that one first. Well, I have lots of friends that have met their spouse through online dating. Yes. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. No. Uh, today, as a Christian... Um, you don't have a lot of options if they're not at your church, uh, you know, and you're not going to a bar, then, um, online, is probably one of the better ways yep. to look for it. Just like we said in the last question, uh, I know that some of those have group things that you can yep. go out as a group and get to know people yep. and, and, uh, you know, just develop your relationships, not just your dating relationships, your friendships yep. too. And so I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I, I think that, uh, it opens the door to some other options. Um, now, you got to be careful, though, when you go down that road, because be very honest and open about your expectations as a Christian and what you're looking for. It's a great open door, but it's not the whole door. It helps you meet somebody. It's great. Go online. Man, I met somebody. Well, then you get to the next level of that relationship. 
Uh, who are you? Where'd you come from? Tell me about your parents. Where'd you go to school? What do you want to do in life? What's your vision? How many times you've been married? You know, I mean, uh, you just got to start asking you know, if I'm going to spend the rest of my life with you, I'm probably going to get personal somewhere in the conversation. I'm not, I'm not going to take three years to do it. Hey, it's good to meet you. I really enjoyed the dinner with you. You'd like to meet you again sometime. Okay. Next time you meet, well, tell me something about yourself and, and just go deeper with it. It's nothing wrong. It's just what people do. So, and then eventually you realize, well, I'm probably not going that direction. And, or yeah, hey, I think we keep doing this. They're not perfect, but I can deal with that. You know, whatever they're doing, I can deal with that. They like to shoe horses. That's fine. I like riding a horse. I maybe like to shoe horses, you know, and uh, it's just, what is it? It's just, there's two people are going to be different. You're going to meet somebody totally different, but could be your absolute perfect match from God. Yeah, I was, uh, last time I was in Georgia, I'm, I was born and raised in Georgia. And uh, last time I was there, I noticed that, and I've never seen it anywhere else, but there when I, and they said, farmers, you know, you can do farmers.com or something like that. Because if you wanted to meet a farmer. Yep. And um, I thought, that's kind of interesting. If you want a really tough life and work really hard and never get a vacation, you want to contact farmers.com. <laughs> <laughs> but you want to find somebody like you, that's the way to do it. <laughs> yes. Yes. No, I respect farmers. They are hardworking people. And thank God. Oh, man. Because. God bless them. Yeah. But uh, yeah. So, but I just thought that was interesting. So, yeah. I mean, and you know what? There's, there's things out there that you probably like to do um, that. That, that's probably one of the only ways you're going to find them. So, yep. yeah, I think it's great. Do it. Do it. Be careful, but do it. Meet in a location that's got a lot of people. Yes. Don't ever get somewhere isolated. I no isolation. Yeah. So lots of people around. And I have a friend that she, she does it, but she does background checks. <laughs> <laughs> After, before she goes out with him and it makes me laugh. What, like one time she said, oh, that guy, he looked like he had it all together, but he had filed bankruptcy like four times and all this other stuff. She's like, did you, you know, know, I know your social security number. Yeah. <laughs> I know what hospital you're born in. Yeah. So, um, that's, that's, uh, yeah. Did you know your parents aren't your real parents? Did you know that? Yeah. Yeah, she probably knew more about him. She even said to him, I can't move forward with this because I did a background check to this guy. And uh, he goes, well, what came up? <laughs> and she started telling me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't, it was, anyway, it was mm. pretty funny to me, but, you know, it wasn't my background check. <laughs> it's electronic age. It is. Well, uh, Joe, my children are really struggling <coughs> to decide on what majors to take in college. Ooh. At the end of the day, they just really don't know what they want to do in life. My daughter seems to change her ideal career every month or so, and she has a hard time um, to commit to it. I wish I could answer for them, but I know it's time for them to make a decision. Do you have any advice on how I can guide them without them relying on me to make the final call? Yes. Uh <clears throat> Yes, like I said, with our six, we went through it. Uh, we always take a side trip every year on vacation. We go visit someplace. Um, I had a, one of my kids wanted to be a forest ranger. So we went to the local forest, you know, about two hours away and saw the forest ranger and visited his house and took a tour to the big building they had there and, and had about a 10 minute conversation. What do you do? You like doing this? And one thing came up. So, well, you know, I have to get an eight year degree to be a forest ranger. Well, that shocked my daughter. Eight years, eight years to be a forest ranger. I thought she just wore a smoky bear hat, drove a jean. <laughs> no, there's a lot more involved. And then I remember one of my kids, I, I grew up, I wanted to be a, a, a pharmacist because we didn't have an air conditioner, but the drugstore did. And I love that neat hamburger. So for years, people said, what are you going to be to grow up? So I'm going to be a pharmacist. Well, that's wonderful, son. That's just wonderful. Well, by the time I got my senior in high school, I realized that's another eight year degree. How come I keep picking eight-year degrees? I thought, I don't want an eight-year degree. And then finally, when you get into college, you realize that first year is pretty much a wash. Like, what are you taking stuff that you'll never remember? Has nothing to do with your major anyhow. And so even college people know it's going to take a couple of years for you to kind of figure this out. And you're going to take courses. You know, well, that's not what I thought. And take that, well, I took geology. I want to be a job. No, that's not what I thought. And so it's a process of elimination. And you finally get to the point where, hey, I think I want to do this. So I had one of my children, this is, this is my last thing. 
one of my kids wanted to be a, 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 a medical person, you know, and uh, I forgot what the term was. It was a big medical term. Well, she volunteered as a candy striper in the local hospital. Well, the first time she saw blood, she threw up. Every time she saw blood, she threw up. So she's a candy striper, but they had to let her go after two weeks. Honey, you can't be a candy striper because there's blood involved sometimes. Every time you saw blood, you throw up on her. So, so my candy striper that wanted to be a, a nurse, basically, became an accountant. Real clean, nice, neat paper. But she's a very good accountant. Does really well at that. So sometimes it's a process of eliminating Ah, it's not that it's not that I think it's this. So I tried to boil it down. Of course, I gave my kids a test every year called discover your God given gifts. It's a book you can find at Barnes and Noble, discover your God given gifts, Don and Katie fortune. And it's just a test, uh, all kinds of vocations. And so at the end of the book, they'll narrow it down to about 12 vocations for you. You know what you like, don't like probably right here in this area. And so that helped a lot. So I'd help my kids kind of narrow down about three vocations. You'd probably like doing and then they, the rest is up to them. You just have to hear from God. So, My son was a music major, and he plays several instruments and everything. He plays well, a lot of instruments. Very he's good. very, very talented. But he, during his junior year, decided to switch majors and go to English because he thought it would help him write songs better. And I was just like, don't do that. I mean, now we're going to have to, you're going to have to go in a whole nother year. And so, um, and I'm like, English, you know, why would you want to do that? Well, it turns out when COVID happened, his music kind of stopped because people stopped meeting together. And so he got a job as an English teacher. Yeah. Well, evidently God was in there. <laughs> Woo. I will say both of my kids were English majors. And I said, if you correct my English one more time, <laughs> I'm from Georgia. I say what I say. Yeah, and that's it comes how it out is. a little different. Yeah. Different. You understand what I'm trying to tell you. That's all that matters. <laughs> But, you know, uh, the truth is, uh, most of the time, your kids won't use their major, with, no. you know, and uh, and most of the time when they're hired, people don't care what their major no, is. They don't care. What they the just want is. to know that they got a degree. Yeah. So yeah, and, and really, most students, I don't think till their junior year, really start to focus in on that. So uh, they'll figure it out. They will. Um, so. Uh, just seven, have, year, seven years of not school and college, and uh, I didn't do a thing I learned there. I'm in the ministry today. I had to get out and go to a different school, you know. And went, did you not know? No. You didn't know? No. We are trying to find out what it is. Yeah. <laughs> but I found it. I found it. And a lot of times what I think when you go to, to college and all, most of the time – what you get out of it is a lot of great relationships yeah. that you use later on down yes, the line. Down line. Later and on so line. Uh, uh, I would get that book that Joe's talking about, discover your God given <laughs> gifts, but, yeah. Um, yeah. but uh, Hey, book. God's got, God's got a plan for them. Yes. He'll reveal it to them. Yes, he just, will. just believe God and, you know, pray in that direction. Well, And you, the thing is you can't get on the roadside table and sit down and wait. You got to move. The way you find out where you're going is to move. Well, I'm waiting on God. Nobody's waiting on God nobody is waiting on God. God's waiting on us to move. So you start moving, he'll order steps, direct paths, but he won't direct the steps. Somebody's not moving. You can't steer a ship that's not moving. You can turn it all you want. That rider won't help a bit if it's not moving. So just move, do something and God will order your steps. He will. Joe, I have your marriage book and I absolutely love it. Oh, good. I saw that you have a small group workbooks available, but are these workbooks also something that would benefit me and my husband to use for ourselves outside of a small group? Yes. We really love the Monday podcast with you and Angel. Please keep it up. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, the workbook would be great. It just what, what it does just helps you to think. Well, have you ever thought about this? No. Well, it's going to come up. You know, have you ever asked your spouse about this? No. Well, they've got an opinion about it. And it's just real common sense. This kind, and you'll get to know each other better. You'll laugh and you'll stare at one another. Like, well, I didn't know that. <laughs> well, I didn't know that. And then it helps you get to know one another. Yeah. There's no, there's no big mystery of it. It's just kind of like getting revelation. And it'll help you do that. Yes. And you can get it at joemcgee.com. Yes, you can. <laughs> yes, you and, can. uh, yeah, you might want to tell your church though. That'd be a good Sunday school. After yeah. you after you do it, you and your husband, maybe yeah. you guys could teach a class. We got several couples across the country that do that. Yeah, I think that'd yeah. be great. Hey guys, thanks so much for joining us today. We love being with you on Mondays. Joe's will be back again on Wednesdays and Fridays. Don't forget, you guys have a great week and be blessed. God bless, guys.
Be sure to join us Monday, Wednesday, and Friday to hear more of what God can do in your life. It's got a great future for you and your family, and we're here to help you get there. Please make sure you visit Joe McGee Ministries on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. There you find all of our Friday funny videos and other encouraging resources for you and your family. While you're at it, be sure to visit JoeMcGee.com. We have all sorts of materials, books, DVDs, you name it, all there to help you, your marriage, and your family succeed.